When thriving tech engineer Zore Sedegi turned to the world of podcasting, she found success in helping others break into the tech industry. But little did she know that her presence online would attract a morbidly unhealthy individual. And after meeting her at a meet and greet, his fascination turned into obsessive stalking. Her sense of security was shattered after this, and Zore sought help from the authorities and her husband for protection against this terrifying individual. Sadly, his persistence would not stop there. As the months passed by, her stalker would find her phone number, her address, and would even make himself known with gifts outside of the property. And despite their best efforts to rid themselves of this nightmare, it would end in the most tragic way possible. Welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime folks, my name is Adrian, and today we're looking at one of the most disturbing stalker cases that I've ever come across. Zora Sadegi and her husband were thrust into a terrifying situation when they could not rid themselves of a online stalker, and tragically, this would end in the most brutal of ways. If you're new here, I like to caffeinate while I investigate darkly fascinating stories, so that does sound like a kind of thing. Please grab yourself a coffee, hit subscribe, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Zore Sadegi. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks. This story takes me back to my birthplace and first home, Seattle, Washington. With just over 4 million residents within its metropolitan area, Seattle is a bustling port city that has grown exponentially in the last decade. The city is known for its rather rainy weather, with almost half of the days in the year experiencing some sort of downfall. Covering the basics here, Seattle is also well known for its aerospace industry, Boeing, and of course, Starbucks. Saying that, if you'd like something a little more specialized, then there is no shortage of artisanal cafes and independent roasters to choose from. In fact, Seattle is known as one of the world's best cities when it comes to coffee, right next to London and Melbourne. Yep, I guess I really am just that predictable. Coffee aside, Seattle is an eclectic city with an ever-growing diverse population. And this is one of the many reasons why 33-year-old Iranian-American national Zore Sadigi decided to settle in this city and, more specifically, in the suburb of Redmond. Zore and her 35-year-old husband, named Mohammed Milad Nasseri, were financially well-off individuals. They lived in an upmarket home they had purchased together for a cool sum of 1.6 million US dollars. Now, of course, this is a lot of money, but at the same time, it is somewhat unsurprising considering Zore and Mohammed were both software engineers, an extremely well-paid title in the ever-growing technical industry sector that is taking Seattle by storm. Mohammed Mohammed was previously employed by Google, before leaving that job for a higher salary at Amazon. And Zore, on the other hand, she was more of a self-made techie. After graduating from the University of Washington, Tacoma, she took on contracted engineering jobs and built a portfolio before becoming a consultant. And of course, Originally being from Iran, she was fluent in both English and Persian. The pair were highly hardworking and down-to-earth individuals, and were very thoughtful of others. In the year 2020, and when the pandemic sent the country into lockdown, both Zore and Mohammed would help vulnerable neighbors by delivering supplies. To add to that, the couple would even prepare homemade soups for those around them. The pair married in 2011, and moving forward into the year 2021, they'd saved up enough money to buy the home of their dreams in Redmond. Friends say that the couple never had any turbulence in their relationship, and they were ready to begin the next chapter of their life before settling down and having children. In the same way that Coffeehouse Crime was born, Zore found herself with free time during the lockdown, and so she channeled this free time and energy into starting a podcast. She was a little more predictable than I was, though. As someone who was already in the tech industry, she used a podcast to help others break into the sector. Real quickly here, but it can be real hard to work one job while simultaneously building another, and one of the best ways to help you achieve your goals is through journaling. On the flip side, as someone who now spends so much time working, it is even more important for me to check in on myself. And thankfully, I can do both of these things thanks to the sponsor of today's video, the Day One Journal app. Day One is the number one journaling app on the Apple Store. Whether you use a journal to write down your personal thoughts or check in on your life, travel, food, or schedule, 
Day one has you covered. Honestly, it is like a Swiss army knife in the journaling world, and is one of the most dynamic and multifaceted apps that I've ever come across. With me on the go in Australia, I use the day one journal app to record my targets and goals in the morning, and then record my mood and memories in the evening. This massively helped me stay productive while on the go, while also taking a moment to pause, reflect, and feel grateful for my day. Day one has reduced my day's clutter and stress while also keeping me more organized. And honestly, there are so many templates to choose from. Here are just a few examples. Mood tracking, diaries, memory logging, goals, tasks, and lists. There are just so many practical uses for day one. My favorite premium feature is the use of multiple photos in a post, and you can even import them from Instagram. And as someone who sometimes spends their entire day working on scripts and reading articles, I find their text to transcription feature to be a real time saver. Give day one journal a try today. Go to dayoneapp.com slash coffeehousecrime and use the code COFFEEHOUSECRIME to unlock a limited time offer of a two month free trial of day one premium. Signing up is incredibly easy and your productivity will love you for it. That's dayoneapp.com slash coffeehousecrime and see why it's the number one journaling app out there. Returning to Zore and her podcast, she often hosted her episodes on an app called The Clubhouse. Clubhouse was launched in March of 2020, and featured interactive rooms where people with similar interests and professions could meet and converse with each other. And here at Clubhouse, Zore found a community ready to form around her. Spoken in her native language of Farsi, Zore reached out to fellow Iranian Americans struggling to find work in the tech industry. Over the months, her talks would consistently grow an audience. She would often advise on how to secure a job, and her aim was to help those who joined her for her speeches. And one of those who joined her and her podcast in late 2021 was 28-year-old Ramin Kodakaram Razai. Ramin joined Zore's podcast to get advice from a Farsi speaker. Being a truck driver, he felt financially unstable and wasn't quite leading the lifestyle that he wanted. And so, with that in mind, he considered following the money by moving into the tech industry. Inspired by his determination to break into this sector, Zore and Ramin started chatting in chat rooms found on the Clubhouse app. These conversations were mostly found in online group chats, as opposed to private ones. As time progressed, he began to message her for advice more frequently, attending as many of her talks and podcasts as his schedule would allow. In short, whenever Zore was online, Ramin would be too. Moving forward to the summer of 2022, Zore's talks had become so popular that she arranged for a group meeting to be conducted in person. With this consisting of several people she had made friends with over the months, including Ramin. Now, you can probably tell where this story is going. Up until now, Zore had kept all of her client relationships strictly in consultancy and professional advice. However, after this meet and greet, it would seem that she had attracted a follower who, unknown to her at the time, had become increasingly obsessive. And after meeting Zore, Ramin's fascination with this podcaster would only become more intense. And after the group meetup, which occurred in summer of 2022, the latter half of the year unfolded in a progressively unsettling manner for both Zore and her husband, Mohammed. Now, at first, Ramin began to message Zore more and more via the Clubhouse app. However, once he found her private Telegram account, he would message her privately without her permission. By November of the same year, his frequency had escalated to unbearable levels, even asking Zore if he could call her, if they could meet, and even if he could visit her at home. And although Zore initially tried to deal with this problem all on her own, it soon became evident that she needed her husband's support. As a result, they both contacted Ramin at the very same time, demanding that he stop all communication with Zore. Furthermore, they blocked every account they knew he owned. But unfortunately, Ramin did not get the picture, and his obsession heightened after this, with him buying countless new SIM cards to message her with a new number. Things became even more worrying on November the 21st, when he messaged Sore to say that he was waiting for her in a nearby hotel, and she knew it was nearby because he mentioned the name of her street. 
By December, Ramin was messaging her every few days to tell her that he was waiting for her in her neighborhood. And although he didn't know which house she lived in, he was getting closer and closer. The situation was becoming dire for Zora and Mohammed. To add to the problem, Zora was currently unwell and was awaiting minor surgery. Meanwhile, Mohammed was due to fly out to Australia for business within the coming days. Of course, this would mean that Zora would be left at home all alone. And in the meantime, Ramin continued to bombard her with telegram messages, telling her that he was waiting for her in the area. Rightfully so, she was terrified. And although he hadn't yet expressed any form of violence towards her, he quite clearly was unhinged. Luckily, Zore had a supportive network of neighbors and family around her, all of whom were on call whenever she needed their help. This, in combination with a top-of-the-range home security system, did help put her mind at ease. She had also informed the local police department about her situation, providing them with Ramin's full name and any information she could remember. In addition to this, they asked Zoray to be vigilant and to call them if anything new were to happen. And so, on December the 20th, and with all of these precautions in mind, Mohammed left for Australia. And that is when it became obvious that Ramin had narrowed down where she lived. Horrifyingly, just minutes after Mohammed left for his trip, there was a knock at the front door. And on the other side was Ramin, with a bouquet of flowers in hand. Not wanting to stop her husband's trip, she called the police immediately instead. But by the time they arrived, Ramin was nowhere to be found. Calls and messages continued over the next few weeks, but otherwise, Mohammed returned later that month without any other incident. That would be until the following month of January 2023, when, all of a sudden, gifted jewellery started showing up on the front porch. Although Ramin was initially hard to track down, the authorities were eventually able to locate him and serve their first warning. As a result, he was instructed to stop contacting both Thore and her husband with immediate effect. This was in perfect timing, because by now, Ramin had started verbally threatening the both of them, promising that he would end their marriage so he could rightfully claim her. But the final nail in the coffin would occur on February the 21st, 2023 when yet another gift was left outside of the front door. This time, Zoray and her husband were not taking any chances. After calling the authorities, officers opened the box to find a gifted silk scarf. And, no doubt, this came from her twisted stalker. As a result, they decided that it was finally time to file for a restraining order. Quite simply, the gifting, threatening, stalking, and harassment had become absolutely unbearable, and the couple now felt entirely unsafe in the four walls of their very own home. The report was finalized on March the 3rd, 2023, with both Zore and Mohammed's names on the paperwork to help protect the both of them. However, due to the rather nomadic nature of Ramin's lifestyle, it was quite hard to pin him down and serve the warrant. And with the persistence and heaviness of his behavior and his actions, it is no surprise to learn that Zore asked for the longest possible term on a restraining order. So, to highlight how persistent Ramin had become, he was messaging Zore up to 100 times a day, including voicemails and phone calls. And whenever she refused to talk to him or simply block his number, he would fall into a hold of fury. He would even go as far to message her husband and demand she pick up the phone. He had even become aggressive, delusional, and violent, often threatening to burn himself alive or burn her and her neighborhood to the ground. To add to this, he had now also tracked down the phone numbers of her friends and her family, meaning that she feared not just for her own safety, but for theirs too. This man had totally violated her privacy. With all of this in mind, Zore requested a 99-year restraining order to keep Ramin away. But even still, this lifelong order was not enough to help her feel safe. And that's because of one particular message that she received only a few weeks prior. Paraphrased, the message read, the only two things that will make me stop is if I end my own life or if I die. Devastatingly, Little did she know how true this statement would eventually become. But the most tragic part of all of this is that, even worse, his death wouldn't happen solely or quietly. March the 10th, 2023. This was the day that a harrowing phone call was made to the emergency services. The voice on the other end of the line was Zore's mother, 
who, at the time, had been staying with the couple in their property for the previous month, and you can probably guess why she had been keeping them company. Neighbours noted that, in the previous weeks, she had been extremely vigilant and protective, often peering out of the window to see if anyone was out there. No surprise, but the neighbours had a good guess as to why she was doing this. In fact, the call made to the emergency services would even come from one of their homes. Through screams and tears, Zore's mother told the operator that someone had broken into her daughter's property, and, even worse, gunshots had been fired. Responders hastily made their way to Zore's home, but, sadly, it was already too late. Upon arrival, officers opened the front door to find Mohammed barely alive on the floor. He had been fatally shot, and, considering the trail of blood, he had crawled his way downstairs. First responders administered first aid, but sadly, all of their efforts were in vain. Shortly after, he was pronounced dead at the scene. Meanwhile, armed officers pressed on through the rest of the property, and after making their way upstairs, they were met with another distressing scene. They also found Ramin's lifeless body next to her, and, quite evidently, he had shot himself in the chest allowing him to die slowly next to his victim. The tragic end to this story painted a picture of the worst possible outcome in any case of extreme stalking and obsession. And to help piece this terrible scene together, there was one distraught witness. Of course, that being Zore's mother. Her account of events goes something like this. At approximately 1.45am, Zore's mother awoke to strange noises from an adjacent bedroom. Unknown to her, Ramin had broken into the home through the bedroom's window, and after exploring where the noise came from, Zore's mother came face to face with the man she had heard so much about. A terrifying individual, well known by her for his disturbing tendencies, had now broken all legal and physical barriers, and was now staring at her from within the comfort of her daughter's home. Remin launched himself at the woman, pushing her out of his way. From his momentum, she was able to break free and escape the room, and eventually the house. That is when she ran to a neighbour's home before dialing 911. Tragically, during this time frame, Ramin found enough time to shoot Sore, Mohammed, and then finally himself. Mohammed, who was only barely alive, managed to crawl downstairs to the front door before collapsing in a pool of his blood. That is where the authorities would find him only several minutes later. After months of harassment, Ramin's spiralling mental health led him to the twisted conclusion that, if he couldn't be with Zara, then nobody could. And sadly, he was given the opportunity to act out on these terrible thoughts. This morning, new details about a murder involving a podcast host and her husband found dead in their Washington state home. Police say the suspect, who was a long haul truck driver, drove all the way from Texas to Washington state. At his next stop, the victim's house. According to police, he shot and killed podcaster Zuri Sadegi and her husband before appearing to take his own life. A neighbor says their security camera caught the commotion overnight. It was blood curdling to hear it. Um, not sure I should have gone back and listened to her or not. Zuri's mother was inside the house, but somehow managed to escape and call 911. This is the absolute worst outcome, um, you know, for a, a stalking case. Although Zore had notified the authorities of his appalling behaviour, not enough was done to stop him. Sadly, stalking cases are rarely a top priority for the police, as many of them are often deemed to be matters of personal relationships. But this was not the case for Ramin, a man who had developed a parasocial relationship with a flourishing tech podcaster, and one strong enough where he believed that he knew her enough to be in love. And had the police acted fast enough and made more of an effort to track him down, then maybe Zore and Mohammed would still be alive today. The missed opportunity here is that Ramin had sat outside of the residence or nearby in a bright red truck for several months. And although it is rare for a stalking case to escalate this far, this story experienced the worst case scenario, ending in two innocent lives being lost, when this didn't need to happen. Now of course, this is where I usually cover the legal proceedings of a case, but with Ramin dead, there is obviously no prosecution to be made. Following this double homicide, Ramin's ex-wife came forward to describe and speak about her ex-partner. Apparently, they were together for seven years, had a daughter, 
and have now been divorced for five years. She noted that in the summer of 2022, and after meeting Zore, his demeanour changed quite drastically. Apparently, she was all he would speak about, and he acted as if they were together. However, she never thought he was capable of not just tracking down, but then stalking an innocent woman. This behaviour was miles apart from the man that she used to know. Zore and Mohammed were successful and caring, and had the rest of their lives ahead of them. But sadly, all of this was taken away from them by a deranged stalker. Zore had made her podcast to help other people break into the industry that she loved so much. But within this kindness, she found a living nightmare that refused to leave her alone. Ramin was an obsessive and sadistic stalker who felt entitled to her love and time. And ultimately, this obsession with Zore led to his end too. While not necessarily a violent crime, stalking is still a very severe form of harassment, and although most of these cases do end up being resolved without any violence whatsoever, the emotional impact on the victim can be enormous. Statistically speaking, one in every three women report being the subject of stalking at least once in their lifetime, which is an alarming figure when you think about it. Sometimes it's not just about the violence. Being physically stalked, or even stalked online, can massively impact a person's sense of happiness and security. And so, no matter how minor the problem, if you're feeling uncomfortable from someone's persistence, it is definitely worth seeking help from your friends, family, and the authorities. And I've said this before already, but parasocial relationships can be absolutely terrifying. This story reminds me of the case of Christina Grimmie, which had very similar consequences. Anyway, folks, I'm gonna wrap this case up here today. Thank you so much for watching. Before you go though, let me know what you think about this case. For one, how do we as a society deal with stalkers like this? And do you think the police did enough to try and stop Ramin? Thank you again to Day One for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna check out the Day One journaling app, click the link in the description below. Definitely losing my voice towards the end of this video, so I'm gonna wrap this one up here today, folks. Thank you again so much for watching today, and as always, I'll see you again very soon for another one. Until that moment arrives though, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.